Welcome back. In this video, we'll continue our discussion on high-res TEM. To recap, we'll start from the most fundamental equation. The image function GR is equal to the object function FR convoluted by the point spread function HR. What this tells us physically is that the points in the object will be disks in the image. Performing Fourier transform, we'll get a new set of equation. Capital GU is the Fourier transform of GR, the image function. FU on the right-hand side is the Fourier transform of the object function. HU is the Fourier transform of the point spread function, called contrast transfer function. HU is made by three parts. AU, EU, and BU. AU is the aperture function, EU is the envelope function, BU is the aberration function, BU is a function of chi U. Chi U has two parts, the defocus part and the spherical aberration part. In high res TEM, we'll introduce another concept called the objective lens transfer function. Here, only the imaginary part of BU contributes to the intensity of what we see in high-res TEM. BU is simply 2 sine chi U. Then TU is the product of AU, EU, and 2 sine chi U. You can see the similarities and the differences of HU and TU. When the illumination is coherent, then TU will be equal to HU. Let's plot TU not worrying about the aperture function and the envelope function. So we can just focus on the sine chi u. The sine chi u will start at zero and decreases initially as u increases. As u further increases, it will have the first crossover called u1. The value of u1 is very important because that tells you the resolution limit. Below u1, the image is directly interpretable. Notice here, u tells us the frequency, so a smaller value for u means large spacing in the real space. Now, let's look at how we read this diagram. Let's pick a value for u. Assuming u is 2 here, the corresponding lattice spacing will be 0.5 nanometers. Tu here is negative, that tells us these lattice fringes will be dark. Looking at another u value, assuming u is equal to 4, the corresponding d spacing will be 0.25 nanometers. In this case, because tu or sine chi u is positive, so these lattice fringes will be bright in your high res TEM image. If you read the legend of the figure, it specified the spherical aberration coefficient the acceleration voltage of the TEM, and the defocus value. We cannot easily change the acceleration voltage of the TEM, so next we'll look at the effect of the spherical aberration coefficient and the defocus value on TU. The figure on the left shows the effect of CS, the aberration coefficient, on TU. As CS increases, the first crossover U1 decreases, that tells us as CS increases, there is a degradation of the resolution for the microscope. I also want you to look at the effect of CS on the contrast you see. Assuming U is equal to 3, the despacing of the lattice fringes will be 3.333 nanometers. In the first case, the lattice fringes will be dark. In the second case, the lattice fringes will also be dark, but very weak in intensity. In the third case, the lattice fringes will be bright. You can make similar observations when you change the defocus value. I will not repeat the exercise, and you can give it a try yourself. Next, I'll briefly talk about the envelope function. If you look at the sine chi u alone, it will just keep oscillating until forever. However, in reality, we quickly lose the intensity as we go to higher frequency space. As you can see here, the 
envelope function doesn't change the uh, contrast transfer, but it has direct effect on the amplitude of what we see. We have a cutoff here called the information limit. At the information limit, we can still get lattice fringes, but the interpretation is very difficult. Another complication in high-res TEM is called delocalization. Delocalization happens when details in the image is displaced relative to its true location in the specimen. The image in the middle is set at the Scherzer defocus, while the one on the left and the one on the right, they are out of focus. Because of the large value of defocus, in the regions where it doesn't have the gold nanoparticles such as here, you see lattice fringes. Also, the location of the planar defects in the gold nanoparticles are also displaced. The rule of thumb is always use the Scherzer defocus when doing high-res TEM to minimize the delocalization. I took this video when I was working with Dr. Hemke at Johns Hopkins University. What I did was I changed the defocus value. The sample we're looking at is a boron sample. You can see by simply changing the defocus, we're able to create different patterns or different features in the high-res image. Also notice that the spots in FFT, they don't really change. What this tells us is the lattice fringes in the high-res TEM image does not change, but the contrast changes as a function of the defocus value. Or just let the video play until its end. Starting from next video, we'll talk about some less commonly used TEM techniques.